Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the event. This has been a long time in coming, and we are so glad that you are here. My name is Nate Miles, one of your hosts for this evening, and I just want to tell you exactly how excited I am, uh, along with the rest of the team that put this together. This is going to be an amazing evening. The whole purpose for tonight, kind of to give you some background, is really um, to celebrate a lot of the elections that just happened, we have a number of African-American and um, Asian uh, elected officials that were just elected. And we wanna celebrate that. Those were some big victories and we wanna celebrate that. We wanna recognize those elected officials who are here with us tonight. And, uh, and I mean, it's like over 80 that were elected and we wanna celebrate that tonight. And we also wanna talk a little bit about and celebrate the strength that the Asian and African Americans have um, enjoyed over the last several years. I know um, going back to a time when people like Senator George Fleming teamed up with people like Ruth Wu, but even before that, back in the days when there was a guy that few people know, like a guy named Wing Luke, when he ran for the city council, when Norm Harrow, uh, was in office. It was one of those things where we had to join up as communities to be able to win. It was times where we had guys like Ron Sims who took office. It was, it was, it was people like Gary Locke who needed the black vote to help push him into office out of that same 37th district. But we all had to come together be, because we knew we were stronger as a group than we were divided. Now, we will not always agree on all issues, but on the issues that we do agree on, we need to be together and to be united. And those issues that we disagree on, we have to be able to sit down together at the table to try to come to some, some agreement on them. And those that we can't, we walk away from. And we're big enough and we understand that, um, that we, that's what we have to do at some point. But tonight is all about the celebration. Tonight is about the, the happy stuff that we do. And so what I wanna do is uh, lay some ground rules and some, uh, give you some ideas what to do. For those elected officials who are on the, on the call, we wanna be able to highlight you along the way. So what we need you to do is, if you will look at your screen where we need you to change your name. Now this isn't that we're not the police, but we need you to change your name. So if you would look at your screen and down at the bottom, if you're on Zoom, where it says participants, click on participants and over in the right hand side, it'll give you a list of all of the participants. Find yourself and then um, um, once you find yourself on the participants, as you see on this deal, go down and put what you are like a 2021 elected official or 2021 appointed official or committee member so that when we get ready to call on you, we can do that, okay? And so that's how we're gonna find you and be able to find you a lot faster, all right? And then for just everybody else who's gonna be on the call, who's watching this over Zoom, because I understand they're carrying this across the country. So just so that you know, this is the, the whole world is watching us tonight because of what we're doing. Um, and they heard that Hayok was going to be on the call and doing this with me. They said, we better stream this across the world. Um, and the, the, um, that people no are going to be watching. Me. What I want you to do, yeah, no pressure at all. What I want you to do is go up to view so you can get a better view. Go up to view, click on view, and then go to side-by-side -side speaker view. Okay. So if you go side by side speaker view versus gallery, it'll give you a better view of what's going on. All right. And so there's, there's very few rules to this, but if you do this, you'll get a chance to see and enjoy the program a lot better. So go to view up in the right hand corner, click on side by side speaker, and then you'll see that you'll get a better view. All right. 
But this is going to be just a great evening. We've got some great entertainment. We've got some great people that are going to be here with us um, and, and doing some, some and doing some things. It's just going to be just an amazing time that you're going to have together, that we're going to have together. And again, like I said, it's really just looking back at some of the things that we've been able to do. I know I personally have just had so much fun dealing with Asian elected official. One of my favorite, uh, and I'll talk to Hale later on, is like Al Sugiyama. I remember when Al Sugiyama, I knew Al Sugiyama was a brother when Al used to say coo. He couldn't say cool. <laughs> Al would say coo. I said, Al, can we do this? Yeah, man, that's coo. And I was like, <laughs> okay, Al. And I knew Al was a brother. I knew um, Auntie Ruth, Auntie Ruth Wu, if you ever wanted to eat some grits, y'all don't remember where uh, uh, they used to have the little restaurant at, at uh, the Silver Fork. You go down there, Ruth helped launch more campaigns for people. She'd go down to Silver Fork and have breakfast with you. And she would get, everybody would go down there and have breakfast with her and she would help plan. And I'll never forget when she got me into the Asian community, she introduced me to Ark Chin. Ark Chin put me on the Chinese nursing home board from the Chinese Nursing Home Board. I met so many people in the Asian community, including Tomio Moraguchi. After decades of hanging out with Tomio, you know, little did I know I would be appointed to the mayor's transition team, Bruce Harrell's transition team, where I'd meet Tomio's daughter, Denise Moraguchi. I mean, it just goes on and on. These, these, these relationships that you get, because we, I mean, our, our careers and futures are so intertwined and you know and it, talk about intertwined I'm so pleased to be joined tonight by my co-MC tonight because our futures have been intertwined back working in politics together I'm so pleased to bring with me um, the lovely and talented Hey Oak Kim Hey Oak um, thank you so much for being here with us tonight uh, for this program why don't you come on in here because uh, I'm just so pleased to have you here with us tonight too Thank you, Nate. Thank you so much. And uh, what an honor for me to share the virtual stage with the incomparable Nate Miles. Um, you know, like Nate, Nate talked about uh, being mentored by the late uh, Senator George Fleming. Well, when I started out in politics in the early 2000s, I'm not going to tell you the specific dates because I'm not going to date myself. But um, Nate was one of the first faces that I saw in Olympia. And he ended up becoming a mentor to me. And you think about just this incredible, beautiful tapestry and legacy that um, folks before us, the giants before us, laid uh, the groundwork for. And uh, despite sometimes maybe some perceptions that there's tensions between our Asian and black communities, the fact of the matter is, especially in places like Seattle and Washington state, we have history that go back decades and Nate, you were you so eloquently described uh, some of that history, but we have history going back decades of Asian and black elected officials working together, collaborating, supporting each other. And really that is what today is about. It's about honoring that legacy, but also heralding some of the new elected officials, the new black faces, the new Asian faces that are going to pick up that legacy and really take us to uh, really the next level and to the future. And so uh, it's really my honor to share again, this virtual stage with uh, Nate Miles, uh, because um, so many of us, I think even on this Zoom call, uh, owe so much to Nate and everything that he has helped to forge and pass. So thank you, Nate. And um, at this time, you know, to, to kind of kick us off, we have a wonderful, wonderful uh, guest singer. Uh, she is um, incredibly talented. She's incredibly experienced. She's also nine years old. Uh, her name is April Zong, and she has garnered millions and millions of views on YouTube and Billaby. She has, uh, ever since she was six years old, she has won numerous regional competitions. And last year she was asked to perform as a soloist by companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Chinese radio stations. She has performed at multiple, multiple um, AAPI community events. And did I mention she's only nine years old? So to help us lead off this evening, uh, we have April who's going to sing the national anthem. And while we are in virtual land and we can't Stand, we do ask that you put your hand, hand over your heart uh, and while we 
hear the, um, the beautiful singing voice of April Zong. April? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rock That's the way I would have done it. <laughs> That's the way I would have done it. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. I saw her sing that when I saw her sing that at uh, at Bruce's tribute in the API community. I thought that woman, that young lady there, has a big future. And I'm telling you, there is a big future for her. I can I can just tell you that. Um, it is, it is my pleasure at this point um, to bring out somebody who is just a quiet force in this community. Well, I shouldn't even say quiet because you, when a center wants to get loud, a center gets loud and she gets quiet and carries a big stick uh, and publishes a paper that is second to none um, and is a voice to the voiceless and a voice for all of us when we need somebody to speak up for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present the to some uh, the incomparable Asinta Ng. Asinta. Thank you. Wow. April, that's a tough act to follow. I'd like to introduce the keynote speaker. Mayor Bruce Harrow is the first Asian American mayor in 152 years of Seattle history and the second black mayor since 1990. His dual heritage has inspired the Asian and Black communities to unite and work together for the greater good. From a boy at Garfield High School to become the CEO of Seattle, a mostly white city, Harrow's story is uplifting, fascinating, and unparalleled. Please join me to welcome history maker, Mayor Bruce Harrow, to share his vision and hopes for our community and city. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Asunta. Let me double check because we all have started talking when our Zoom microphone is off and they start saying. So I'm not gonna do that, but I start you off with a laugh. Uh, I'm honored to, uh, to be a part of this and I wanna thank both Nate and Asunta, and I'm looking at the list of organizers for all of you putting this together. Uh, again, very humbled. I, I would like, love to absolutely share a few thoughts uh, with you. And, and when I look at the invitees and the leaders and the other elected officials, all I can say is, wow. 
we are certainly in great company. And many of you have not only helped me in a long career, I've been in politics now, I was elected for 12 years, but certainly only mayor for five days. Many of you not only have helped me in multiple campaigns, but you've helped me with this transition into these very trying times, very, these times where um, this is now our tool every day, right? Times where everything we know is sort of natural to us to shake someone's hand, to be social, to be around loved ones, to kiss them on the cheek. Everything we know that comes very natural to us as affiliative cultures. And I'm speaking in particular in our African American community and in our Asian Pacific Islander community. Everything we know about embracing one another. You know, we don't, we don't shake hands like this, right? We, we hug up on one another. Everything we know now is ill-advised because of COVID and Omicron. So we are, um, to, to a large extent, these are unprecedented times. And I think to even think even further along the times we are all leading, because we have so many elected officials and appointed officials, even further down the road is for many of us that has um, a, little, a little gray hair, not, not, not all of us, but some of us, that what we saw in the 1970s and 1980s and 1960s with race turmoil and violence and hatred along racial lines, here we are in 2022 talking about Black Lives Matter. For those in the African American community, you may recall that many of us grew up with the idea of saying, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Black is beautiful. Black power. It was an empowering message. Now our message is we matter. Okay, we, we, we understand that. We have to say we matter when we look at African Americans dying at the hands of, of police unnecessarily. And Asians with the rise in violence against Asians. Well, we've lived through the Chinese Exclusion Act. We've lived through the Japanese internment experience. We know the racism um, that have been perpetuated for hundreds of years against Asian Americans. And when people are saying, well, we thought you were the model American and everything has just been perfect for you. No, look at your history books. So here we are in 2022 grappling with the same issues. But the, the good news is we are here to make history. We are in the history making business. Many of the people on this call were elected for the first time to office changing the narrative. We are in the history making business. So I want everyone to think about a question for a minute, a question I'm gonna pose. Where do you draw your inspiration from? Just think about it for a moment. Let's say you wanna go exercise or you want to, uh, you're just feeling a little down in the dumps. It's one of those great rainy days in your city and you just need a little extra black coffee, or a little something to pick you up. Now, I know some people like Nate Miles may uh, partake. No, I'm just joking. You know, I'm good for a joke every now and then. Hey, Oak, you got to laugh at me once in a while here. In, in all seriousness, I know uh, I've been out with Nate. He doesn't do anything. It's square. Um. But where do you draw inspiration? Is it a book? Is it a song? Is it an author? Is it a movie? Is it someone you love or that loves you? Where do you draw inspiration from? And, and we draw from multiple sources, right? I certainly if draw inspiration from my wife of 30 years. Uh, just a simple walk in the park, a simple joke here or there. Music is an inspiration for me. When I work out, my wife can run with nothing. Everything is distracting. She likes hearing just the breeze. I get tired if I don't work out with music, constant good music or a really good book that inspires me. And wherever you draw inspiration from, I would suggest you double down on it, you triple down on it and realize that inspires you. And I'll tell you something else where I draw inspiration from. Are people on this call? I could go down the list when I saw, well, I'll pick on someone for a minute. When I saw Hamdi, I'm picking on her because she, not only is she a new port commissioner, but she's working on our administration. So I'm going to pick on her. That I would watch this 
young lady at, at some of these forums, and I would see her energy and, um, quite frankly, her intelligence and her quick wit and her smile. And I would sort of straighten up in my seat a little bit and say, well, I got to get on my A game here. She's inspiring me. Um, quite candidly, I was, uh, I've had a pretty hectic, hectic day today, and I listened to Nate Miles talk. And I got a clip on tie and I said, well, I better put it on because I looked at the lineup here and I said, he's inspiring me to be better. This is not a clip on tie type. So what I hope we do in 2022, that the purpose of this gathering is that we learn how to inspire people. I have pretty thick skin. Um, a lot of people say I'm just overweight. Well, okay, I might be overweight, but I also have thick skin. So a lot of stuff bounces off of me. But not a, not all of it, you know. I was I I had an opponent that spent one point four million dollars or so on negative ads against me for things that I did not do or I did not say. And while I'm quick witted and I smile a lot, those things hurt. And when you hear things about you in your respective capacities, you're not perfect. But you hear the voices. What will inspire you to get beyond that or these kinds of gatherings and friends on your left and right in this, these Zoom calls. Let, let's inspire one another. Let's hold each other up. Positive affirmation. So I will tell all of you, I think most of you have my personal cell phone. You constantly do inspire me. You esteem me. And I hope to be that to you. The last two points I really like to make are that particularly people of color that we sometimes have to compete for resources. There's some work done down in Los Angeles in particular with the Asian communities and the African-American communities. And, um, and I participated at a few forums where we talk about how often we have to compete for resources. And, and in that conversation, we become mistrusting of one another. Oh, I know this person is going to be this way. I didn't quite... I wasn't quite all in on that person. I, you know, I would always say, as I said in my inauguration the other day, just assume the best in people. Assume that people go into public office trying to make the right decisions. They are bold enough. They have enough integrity to speak truth to power. That most people that go in office are going for the right reasons. And they have the moral fiber by which they can make the tough decisions but that their values of diversity and inclusivity and uh, anti-racism and fighting against income inequality and fighting for people underrepresented, just assume that that is in their DNA. Sometimes it is not, we have to understand that. But most people, I know people on this call, I know just about most of the electeds here and appointeds, that they are made of good stuff. And so I say this to say that, um, as I've made a few decisions here in the last couple of weeks, people say, well, is he going to do this or is he going to do that? Assume that you got to look at the long haul in what we do. And you have to not only think about short term, you have to think about long term. So under our administration, at least, we're very strategic, but our values are uncompromised. And that's why these forums are so important. The last piece I'm going to close with is just this thought, and I want us to think about it. Is it again for those that are, I think they call it long toothed. I never understood that expression to describe someone old. I think the teeth are particularly long, but I say gray in the hair. For people who have who are a little seasoned, I'm trying to use the right political term to talk about old people. I'll just say old. That the anger and the frustration that the younger generation feels about income inequality, when they see someone like Jeff Bezos who's worth $186 billion or a Gates that's worth $186 billion, and they see people in their, in their intents on the sidewalks, right? And then they realize that because of global competition that it is harder to get in some schools than it is, is in others. When, when I was going to the University of Washington in 1970s, there were affirmative action policies in place. They recognized they needed to true up the system. And while it was still tough to get in, 
right now I was not competing against some of the national global forces that people have to compete, keep, compete into now. And worse, the financial impediments to go to school are incredible. Uh, these schools are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. So the pathway to success is sometimes a little garbled or unclear. And they get angry. They look at the inconsistencies in our society. They see George Floyd need to death. They see incident after incident that just does not make any sense at all. And as we, many of us have sort of done decently in the world, we are in positions of power that they do not want to listen often because their, their willingness and their ability to shout louder sometimes will transcend their ability to listen. And as you get older, you learn how to listen more. One of the benefits of age. When people yell at me, I shut down. I don't hear. I can't hear yelling. They can amplify the sound. But I'm just like Charlie Brown. Wonk, wonk, wonk. I can't hear it. You whisper to me now, listen. And I'm saying this to say what? I'm saying this to say that we have to show patience to the younger generation. We have to show leadership to the younger generation, which means we listen. We show how to listen. We'll be better leaders if we do that. And I don't have it licked. I don't have it down pat. But every opportunity I get, and all of you are going to get opportunities, all the elected and appointed officials are going to get opportunities with the microphone. And so when I talk about one Seattle, I'm talking about a Seattle being able to listen as loud as we speak. And so I'm hoping that you embrace my mantra of, of one city, one Seattle. Don't have to agree on everything, but we can agree on our values, which is trying to understand. There's one rich part of our collective communities, both in the black community and the Asian community, as we try desperately to listen to one another. We realize it is our collective power not, not our sameness, but our collective power to love one another, to use our faith-based communities, um, to use our spirituality, to use our love, our love, our love. And that's how we get things done. And that love is not the most articulate word coming out of some of the younger generation. It's anger, it's frustration, it's fear. But we have to listen to that because they are seeing something that we've already lived. So I'll close with that. Thanks for letting me ramble a few thoughts and a few words to you. And I can't wait for 2022 to keep going and get past our spike on this Omicron and go back down and look forward to learning with you, loving with you, and listening with you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, we want to thank you for coming and spending some time with us. You talk about inspirations. You are an inspiration to many of us because anytime a Garfield Bulldog can become mayor of Seattle, anybody can become. Hey, Lord, there's hope. There's hope for all. There's hope for all of us. But seriously, though, you are an inspiration to all of us, especially coming out of that that shows what can be done. Uh, if you put your hands together, especially when you get to know your story. So we want to thank you um, with that. So what we want to do now is we want to bring back in Hale uh, and we want to um, pay recognition to our elected and appointed officials who are here. And we just want to say up front that we really would like to take the time to honor you in a correct way and spend more time doing this, but just because we don't want to keep people here all night, we don't have time, but we're going to recognize you and we're going to go as slow as we can and take as much time as we can to acknowledge you. Um, but hopefully at some point we'll be able to, when we can go live, as, as the mayor said, when this virus is out of the way and we can do it live and do it the way we want to do it, we'll really be able to honor you the way we want to. But tonight, tonight, we're just going to give you a little taste of what we want to do when we get back live. Okay, somebody say amen as we do in the black community. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. All right. All right, then. Well, let's start with our federal people. Our first group of federal um, group that we have is uh, Mr. Nick Brown, who is our U.S. attorney for this area. Uh, Nick was appointed by President Biden uh, to be the U.S. attorney. Secondly, um, we have, and a good brother, I know Nick very well. Secondly, we have Mike Fong. <laughs> 
who many of us knew Mike uh, because he served in the um, Durkin administration and has always been out into the community. Uh, Mike's good brother uh, and Teresita community wouldn't be very much without Teresita who is still around here and just doing great things, continuing to do great things on the President's Advisory Commission for Asian American Affairs, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. On that committee, she is joined by Grace Huang, um, is another committee member. So we wanna thank both of them for serving the president at the federal level. Thank you both for your service. Uh, and uh, the next uh, group, uh, I'll let uh, Hale uh, bring those in. Thanks so much, Nate. And just as a reminder again uh, for everyone, the elected and appointed officials that we're highlighting uh, through this slide presentation are just the ones who were uh, either appointed or uh, elected or reelected in 2021. And so uh, just so that Nate and I don't get in trouble, if you don't see yourself or your favorite uh, elected official in the slide deck, just understand those are the parameters. And uh, we've, we're gonna go through about 77 of them. So in, in our next slide, we've got state and legislative leaders Steve Hobbs was appointed to be Secretary of State by Governor Inslee recently. Uh, and in so doing, he became, he became the first person of color and the first person, person of Asian descent to ever serve as Secretary of State. We have John Lovick, who is the newly um, uh, appointed state senator in the 44th Legislative District. Uh, and while John Lovick may be new to the state Senate, he isn't new to the state legislature, having formerly served in the House, uh, including as Speaker Pro Tem for many years. Uh, down in um, the Tacoma area, we have in the 27th Legislative District, we have Yasmin Trudeau, who is a, also a newly appointed state senator. Um, and uh, replacing John Lovick in his former House seat, we have Brandy Donaghy, also from the 44th Legislative District. Thank you, Hayo. Um, and let's move into King County. While she was saying we have a bunch of newly appointed and elected, we go back to some of those who've been around a while. And one of those is Conrad Lee, who is a council member over in Bellevue uh, and a good friend. Conrad used to represent me uh, when I lived in his district, a good friend and somebody who you can count on uh, anytime, just give him a call. Um, we have Jane Aris who is a school board member over in Bellevue, as well as Joyce Shuey, uh, who is on the school board, school board over there as well. Um, we move up to Bothell. Uh, we're on the Bothell uh, City Council. Han Tron is a member of that council, uh, as well as uh, Kim Muramoto over in Clyde Hill. I saw Kim, oh, there he is. Yeah, saw him earlier. How you doing, Kim? Uh, thank you for being here with us tonight and appreciate you stopping by. Great. Continuing on in King County, in Federal Way, we have Hong Tran, council member for the city of Federal Way. We have Joe Van, who, re who represents school district number three for the Highline School District. And I think, yep, there's our slide. We also have Russell Joe, who is a council member for the city of Issaquah. And while Russell was uh, uh, newly elected, uh, uh, not uh, re-elected last year, he actually previously served on the Issaquah City Council from 2000 to 2007. Uh, Sydney Mullings from uh, Issaquah School Board also just uh, was re-elected last year. Angela Kugler from the uh, city of Kenmore is a council member there. And Awal Farah from the Kent School Board uh, rounds out this uh, slide. And that is a, that's a great slide. I mean, it shows you where people are starting to move to. And um, when you start, I see you, Angela, and moving even up to Kenmore. Uh, that's when you know that we are starting to make some progress. Next slide, please. One more uh, person to bring up. Oh, there's Awali. How are you? This young man is doing great things. There's another one, young one of our young ones to follow. And he also, four, his four children went through, graduated through the Kent School District, Nate. Nice. 
Nice. Well, you better take care of him. We got Brenda Fincher down there. Brenda, you better guys better take care of his kids down there. Down there. Otherwise, we'll have, we'll have him on you. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Brenda Fincher, who's on the who's one of the city council members down there. We have uh, Sot Winder uh, Carr, who's on the council as well, over on the in Lake Forest Park. Um, we have um, uh, Pratima uh, Lakota, uh, who is the, who is there? Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, in, that's in Newcastle. But in Lake Forest Park, we have Tracy Furutani, uh, who's up there. So we appreciate uh, Tracy's work uh, that's going on. Hey, Tracy, thank you for stopping by with us tonight. Um, and this one, I didn't know uh, if the mayor's still on the mayor of Seattle. I didn't know, uh, Bruce, that we had the mayor of Mercer Island, Celine Nice. So we got a little action over on Mercer Island if stuff starts going bad. Now, we got somebody <laughs> that I give them that card over there. Uh, in Seattle, I mean, on Lake Washington, the school board over there, Leah Choi, is uh, on the Lake Washington school board. Uh, hey, Leah, good to have you over there holding down the fort for us there. Thank you so much for your work that you're doing there. Great. And Nate, staying on the Lake Washington theme in the city of Renton, we have James Albertson, who is a city council member. Amy Lamb is a council member from the city of Sammamish. Nav Otal is a water commissioner also from the city of Sammamish. I think she's being highlighted now. We have Mohammed Eagle, council member from the city of SeaTac. We'll wait till the next slide, John, to feature all of these elected officials. Great. Uh, I mentioned James and Amy, Nav, and Mohammed. And then rounding out this slide, we have Hamdi Mohammed, uh, Commissioner on the Port of Seattle, and Toshiko Grace Hasegawa, also Commissioner on the Port of Seattle. And there's Hamdi. Uh, and these two phenomenal women, Nate, I know you know this, but just in case we have folks in the audience who don't, under, who don't know, not only um, were they, uh, when they became elected, did they, not only were they the first women of color to be elected to the Port Commission. Uh, together with their fellow commissioner, Sam Cho, they now represent a minority majority on our Port Commission. So shout out to Hamdi and Toshiko and Sam. And I should also point out that Hamdi is a newly appointed uh, director now for the city of Seattle's Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. And Toshiko obviously is our um, executive director of our state commission on Asian American and Pacific Islander affairs. Outstanding. And I wanted to make sure too, that I didn't go by Pratima too fast when I was going, cause sometimes I get going fast and uh, Pratima, I did make sure that I didn't want to miss you on uh, when I was calling out people a minute ago. Um, in King County uh, on the uh, Seattle Public School uh, Board, uh, Brandon Hersey, uh, is has been reelected there. Brandon, we see you. Um, and then our very own Mayor Bruce Harrell in the city of Seattle. And uh, the mayor has taken some real big steps in bringing on people in his administration, one of which is Kendi Yamaguchi. Uh, Kendi's no stranger to what we're doing. Kendi, uh, if you're here, uh, I think we can get you up on the screen because that's a that was a very good ad uh, to the administration. Um, Matt Chan who's a special advisor to the mayor, uh, was also added um, to the team uh, there in the city of Seattle now. Um, I think um, Michelle is still here, Michelle, Michelle Sarju. I know she had to jump off a little bit earlier, but if she's still here, we may be able to put her up on the screen, but she's a uh, school director down there with Brandon. So hopefully between the two of them, we got some change, be some changes going on around here. Brandon, don't be taking that. Don't be falling for the okie doke. We ain't going for that no more. It's a new day now. Hi, Kendi. There you go. Hey, Kendi. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Matt. I know you show up. Yeah, yeah. And then we got then we got the the senior the senior chief chief in charge. We got Monisha Harrell that that shows up on the screen. Our senior uh, 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 deputy mayor. 
Manisha, good to see you and great political mind and operative that's won all kind of uh, elections and races around here before she took over the mayor's staff. So I know she's gonna whip that place into shape as well. So good to see you too, Monisha. Uh, next slide. And congratulations, Monisha. And rounding out the deputy mayors, and, and Nate, did you know that our mayor, uh, uh, Bruce Harrell has appointed three women of color as his deputy mayors. And uh, we heard, uh, you mentioned Kendi and, and uh, Monisha, and we have on the screen, I think Tiffany Washington, who is Deputy Mayor for Mayor Harrell in the city of Seattle, focused on housing and homelessness. Tiffany, thanks so much for being here with us. Uh, we also have Vivian Song. I think we're, I'm gonna wait for the slide. Great. And we also have Vivian Song Moritz, who is a, uh, joins Brandon as a, and Michelle as a new school board member for the city of Seattle School School Board. Uh, next, we have Deshaun Quinn, council member for the city of Tequila. Now, Nate, don't let Deshaun's youthful appearance fool you because Deshaun has been uh, an elected official since uh, for 14 years. So he was first elected in 2008. Uh, but the next person um, on our slide is very young by any objective measure. He's only 24 years old. Uh, Mohammed Abdi is a council member also from the city of Tukwila. And Mohammed at 24 is the youngest Somali elected official in the state of Washington. And finally, rounding out the slide, we have James Randolph, deputy mayor from the city of Woodinville. James, I'm gonna be coming up there when they have that fair up there, man. And you gotta hook a brother up with some of that popcorn you have at that <laughs> county fair they have up there. Don't be trying to play me and sending me back down there to the to the other one, because I'm coming up. That's good. That's a good deal. That's a good, that's a good move. Uh, let's move over to Kitsap County. Uh, over in Kitsap County, um, we have uh, Brenda Fontroy Johnson, who's a council member over in Bainbridge. And for a minute there, Brenda, I didn't even know they had brothers and sisters over there. I had to drive around twice to see your yard sign just to make sure. I thought Clarence was the only one. And Clarence is a, Clarence is a buddy from way, from way back. And I had to go see, because when they appointed Clarence, I was like, oh, God, we're in big trouble now. But Clarence, is good to see you. I think you're going to do just a heck of a job for him. And glad, I was so glad and proud of you when that happened. That's, a, that's an amazing deal and, and great for them. Uh, Fred Chang is a member of the council down in Fort Orchard. Fred, congratulations on being elected down there. And, and, and Joy um, uh, Ramsdale, who is now on the water district down there. This just shows you we're everywhere now, even on the water commission down there in Silverdale. So Joy, thank you for your service down there as well. Great, and Nate, we're now moving to the Beth Bethel School District where we have Marcus Young, who is a school board member there. I think the next slide as well as Terrence Mayer Sr., who's also a school board member there. And, and Nate, I think it's worthwhile to pause just because we've mentioned a number of uh, elected officials who are school board members. Uh, many, many school districts across our state have a very important, um, have very important school levies coming up on February 8th. So I know, you know, most folks are probably just trying to take a moment to relax from their um, November elections, but for many of our school districts, they have very, very important levies. So be on the watch for uh, those ballots in your mailboxes. Uh, we also have Mom Basau, who is a council member from the city of DuPont. We have Erica Buckley, who's a council member from the city of Edgewood. Nikki Buford is a council member from the city of Fircrest. Fircrest. I'll slow down in case some of them are featured. And Randy Takahara is a commissioner for fire district number six in Lake Bay. Over in Pierce County, back down towards T-Town, um, we have Miss Mary Moss, who is a council member out in Lakewood. Um, good friend, uh, Lawrence Bow Larry Bowles, uh, who is a council member out in Pacific. Uh, Melanie Tinsley, who is a school director in Stellicum. Also on the board uh, with uh, her is Victor Hogan, 
a school board member there in Stellicum. They thought they ditched us out in Sumner, but oh no, Pat Cole is out there right next to the, to the, uh, uh, to the, to the fair out there. I know where the ferry is out there. I'm gonna come and do the Puyallup if I have to and get me some of that <laughs> popcorn up there too. Um, Pat Cole is out there. We appreciate you doing your job. Chelsea McElroy is on the school board down in Tacoma. Chelsea, thank you for all you do for our children to keep them learning and ahead of the curve. Great, and staying in Pierce County, we have Joe Bushnell, who is a council member from the city of Tacoma. He's also the first Cam uh, Cambodian American to serve on the uh, Tacoma City Council in its history. We also have Kiara Daniels, who is also a council member from the city of Tacoma. Of course, we have Victoria Woodards, who is the mayor of the city of Tacoma. And uh, I think many of us know that uh, Mayor Woodards has uh, actually served on the uh, Tacoma City Council for seven years before she took over from um, former mayor, Marilyn Strickland. Um, and just so again, so that Nate and I do not get in trouble, okay? Marilyn Strickland, who is our Congresswoman uh, from the 10th Congressional District is not on this list because she didn't have an election last year. Uh, the same goes for Pramila Jayapal who represents the 7th Congressional District uh, in Seattle. Uh, neither of them were up for election uh, last year. Uh, and finally, but uh, last but not least, uh, Ethelda Burke, from this, uh, who is a school board director from University Place on this slide. Let's go up north and uh, see what they have up north. Um, the first of all, we have Will Chin, who is up in Edmonds and is on the Edmonds City Council up there. So if your ferry is running late, call Will and tell Will to have him hold it for you. He might be able to get him to hold your boat <laughs> before it goes over. <laughs> Secondly, we have David Simpson, good brother at the Port of Everett, um, and uh, was the first person on the call today. Um, Carl Carey, who is on the school board in Granite Falls. Now, I had to double check that and say Granite Falls. Yep, they had their brother out there in Granite Falls. Appreciate you doing your job because I know that was one, uh, Carl. Thank you for doing your work, doing service out there. Um, over in Lake Stevens, we have Nina Kim Hansen who is on the school board out there. Nina, thank you so much. Um, in uh, Linwood, we have a young man, Joshua Benda, who is on the city council there. Thanks, uh, Joshua. And then finally in Linwood, um, holding down the fort with him is Ms. Shirley Sultan. The two of them are the dynamic duo there in Linwood. Great, and we're gonna stay in Snohomish County in our second to last slide. Uh, we have Kyoko Matsumoto Wright, who is the mayor of Montlake Terrace. And Kyoko has actually been um, an official since, 2000, uh, since 2008. Uh, we also have Steve Woodard, who is a council member also from Montlake Terrace. Lewis Harris is a council member from Mukilteo. Uh, he was actually appointed in 2020. David Chan, from uh, representing fire rescue position number seven in Snohomish. And there's Kyoko, I see her being highlighted. There she is. Uh, and we also have Felix Neal's council member uh, for Snohomish County as well. Over in Thurston County, uh, down near Olympia, um, we have some uh, a young brother, Dante Payne, who is a council member uh, in Olympia. Um, we have another uh, council member, uh, Yin Ho Win uh, is down there and both of them are holding down the council force and we appreciate that. Out in Tumwater, which is a little bit further south uh, is Angela Jefferson. Uh, her and Peter Agabi are both on that council there. Um, and I see uh, Yin, thank you Yin for your service and for all you do, um, and Angela, I see you, uh, recognize you, Angela Jefferson. Um, that is just hard work, I know, especially down there, but you're carrying it through and we thank you for that. 
Nate, we did it. At 77 we, elected and appointed officials. All of you, for all 77 of you, for the job that you do, we want to just, we want to thank you for the, you know, for the job that you do. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. Um, um, everything that you, everything that you do uh, and that you have done. And this would not have been possible I tell you to, to bring this thing um, and uh, to to be able to show you this tonight. It's it's easy to stand up in front of a camera and try to look good, but this would not have been possible if it wasn't for the people that you see on this screen. Um, you know, I hope their names are up there. If we can get to them, we'll get to them. If not, just know this because most of you know these people because they're out there in the community anyway. Regina Glenn, um, Janice Zahn. Um, Kristen Ang, uh, Council Member Germai Zahalai, um, uh, new brother on the King County Council, Tim, T Tim Otani, Henry Yates, um, uh, David Della. Let me tell you something. Tim uh, or David Della and Henry Yates went around and good thing we only told them that we wanted these counties, because if they would have, we told them to go all over the state, we would have been here all night because they got all of these people, just the two of them, and 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 got all of the list together and put all of the people's names and phonetically spelled them and got the right district. And I mean, it was just amazing what they did in pulling these people together. When Nona Hollins Haig, the busy body of, of Washington State, I mean, if you want to know about it, she has a radio show. She, 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 she's into everything. She's on the governor's council. She's just, she, she is, she's just into everything. And when we asked her about doing this, she said, of course, I'll do this and, 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 and be with it. Um, George Northcroft, again, he's retired and still helping out. I mean, these people just, just go above and beyond. But this next woman, Cindy uh, Wong Lee, Cindy worked with an organization um, uh, called Vibrant uh, Cities. And I mean, if it wasn't for them, there's no way in the world this thing would have been able to happen. They let her come on and dedicate some time. But Cindy, I mean, she took this thing over and everything that we needed, every call, every meeting, everything that we could possibly need, Cindy was there every time we needed it. And I just want you to know, Cindy, from the bottom of my heart, the group has something for you that will be delivered. We have a basket and a certificate that's coming to you. This is what it looks like. And it's coming to you from the bottom of our heart. We just wish we could do more for you in this stupid COVID deal. But this is just, I mean, it's just our way of saying thank you. Just a teeny weeny bit of thank you for all that you did. You're a sweetheart. You're a wonderful, amazing woman. You made this thing happen. Um, I don't know. I don't have any words to say, uh, except, you know, on behalf of the committee, you're the, you're, 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 you know, um, excuse my French, you're badass. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you just, you just are. And, and, and that's in a great way, in a great way. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. And then finally, uh, on this deal, the, the quiet force behind this deal, the only other person that I left off on that list was Asinta Ng, who, um, is the is the voice for the voiceless, as I said earlier before, and those who can't speak for themselves, she will speak for us if nobody else will. And we thank you, Asenta, and continue doing what you're doing. When we come up with an idea, I remember we talked about this idea. Asenta said, well, Nate, stop talking about it. Let's do it. And, you know, two months later, we had the first one up. Uh, a month and a half after that, we had the second one up. So here you go. Thank you so much, Asenta. And, and Nate, we've also, speaking of badass women, I think you're going to introduce our next speaker, right? I am. I am. And I mean, this one is somebody that I, I had to catch my breath because this is a woman that when she used to get introduced, they'd say that, you know, she was uh, Bob Hasegawa's daughter. Now they're starting <laughs> to say, Bob Hasegawa, you're uh, Toshiko's, uh, Toshiko's uh, father. And I'd be proud to be her father. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this woman needs no introduction because she has been setting the world on fire since she got here. And she's now just taken over out at the port of Seattle and is doing great things. Um, 
Uh, Sam Cho is the, the vice chair of the council, and she's somebody that is right behind him. This is Toshiko Hasegawa, and I'd love to have her say a few words. Toshiko. Thank you so much, Uncle Nate. And, you know, it really is my tremendous honor to share this platform with people who I have across my life so long admired, um, you know, figurative, but also literal giants in our community who are breaking ceilings and making history. Um, they say that we're a reflection of the company that we keep, and it is no coincidence that Mayor Harrell has the most diverse administration in Seattle history. He has hand-selected, revered community-based heroes who have the confidence of the public that they serve. And seeing who's on the call today really captures for me that it really does take a village. We could all take a look at the attendees today and give gratitude to someone among us who has mentored you or empowered you or held you accountable to be your greatest self. In Japanese culture, we have a phrase that many of you have heard me talk about, but it's also tattooed on my wrist. And this phrase is okage samade, which means I am who I am because of you. So as I step into this role as a separately elected official, and yes, the first Asian American woman to serve in this capacity, I do so humbly because I recognize that I've only arrived at this place at this moment because of the fight and the sacrifice, the beautiful audacity of the people before me who advocated so that I might. And, um, you know, we also recognize that it's not just our right, but it's our responsibility to preserve that legacy and to pay it forward. So it's not just me, but so many people on this call are the first of their kind in their respective jurisdictions but we also need to take to heart that the key, the key is to ensure that we are assuredly the first of many. Our elders have demonstrated to us the strength in solidarity. And many people here know the impact of exclusionary redlining laws. As a result, between Black and Asian communities, the only place we could live was together. When my grandpa was young, people don't know this, he and his siblings slept on the gym floor of the Japanese Baptist Church on Yesler, on Yesler Street in the Central District. And because of the pervasive racism in America, we also know that Japanese were put into camps. But what's less told is that when the war ended and community went out of the camps and back into their homes, it was actually the Black community that held fundraisers so that the Japanese families might find their footing again. I reflect upon the continued leadership of Black community members advocating for our civil rights on behalf of all of us. And I also think of the JACL contingent in attendance at the March on Washington holding their signs that say yellow peril supports Black power. Or to today when coronavirus broke out that the NAACP was the first organization to speak out against anti-Asian hate or that when George Floyd was publicly murdered of the groups forming here at home, like Viet's who give a shit for black lives. We have this example from our elders of what it looks like to stand up for each other, but more importantly, with each other, to organize interracially in order to advance justice and to work intersectionally with immigrants groups and women's groups and LGBTQ groups because infringing upon people's rights is a slippery slope and a threat to one of us is a threat to all of us. And it also instills in me the urgent need to work intergenerationally because as we have inherited the world from our elders, we are also borrowing it from our children. Only the hard conversations lead to real solutions with tangible outcomes for our communities. We have the ingenuity, the talent, and the resources to make real change, but the question is, do we have the will? The will, the humility, the courage, that beautiful audacity, and the hope to forge a future of unity, a future of prosperity and peace. So, as we close this event, we leave for a long weekend, 
but Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and it is a day of action. So for the leadership who is on this call, I implore you to reflect upon where you stand today. That means look behind you. As you achieve, who is backfilling your previous position? Who is in this pipeline climbing and achieving that could use your mentorship, your support, your words of encouragement saying, you should. By being cognizant, not of just where we are headed, but where we have been to ensure that this rising tide, this glorious rising sparkling tide is going to lift all the boats. And I so look forward to the next four years of laying an internal foundation for tolerance, acceptance, and grace. Thank you all so very much for being here today and be well. Thank you so right. much, Commissioner Hasegawa. Although you have many I titles, you. I don't know if we, how we can decide which title to pick. <laughs> I, I told you she was coming. I told you she was coming. You got to watch out. Well, you guys, it has been truly a pleasure. Hey, Oak, it's been a, it's been just a, uh, just a, 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 a pleasure of mine to be able to work with you. I've always wanted to do that. This has been great. Uh, John Chin, if you guys haven't used John Services, you ought to find out about John Services. John is an amazing guy. He's put yeah. this whole thing together yeah. and produced. There he is, John Chin, uh, engaging virtual meetings, Seattle, Washington. He took this thing, put it online. He's amazing also. He can put well, any he, meeting that he, you have. He, he can good. And make you look good too. If he can make me look good, he can make anybody look good. And I just want to tell you that he is planning to have this. The slide decks are going to be available. So anybody who was on this call can get one, um, and can get a copy of this. There's going to be a survey coming so that if you want to do more of this, it's all about us working together. What can we do good? What can we do better? What should we be doing? If you want to join this happy band of merry men and women, please do. I mean, because it's not exclusive. It's not to cut anybody out. This was just a group that came together to do it. But we can always expand it. We can always do more. Please feel free to get involved with it. You guys have been great. Thank you for letting us be in your Zoom, in your computers, cell phones. It's been great. Thank you for sharing the last hour with us. I'm Nate Miles. This is my partner, Hayo Kim. Hayo Kim, you guys are great. Thank you so much and enjoy yourself. If I don't see you before, have a happy King Day. Happy Korean American Day to you today. Oh, today. Nice. Today. Today.